Pop-up shops and farmers markets are an amazing way to get your brand in front of new eyes, but there's so much to them and so many questions that I wish someone answered for me before I started. There's not a whole lot of information out there on how to be successful, so here's a deep dive into pop-up shops based on my experience with my business. Some pop-ups are monetarily successful while others aren't, and I found that there's not really a rhyme or reason to why. Even a pop-up shop that you did last year that was really successful might not be as successful this year. So with that being said, don't beat yourself up if you don't make the sales that you were intending to. It's okay to set target sales goals, but be gracious with yourself because all pop-ups are different. They won't all go perfectly, but there is always something you can learn from them. If nothing less, you'll get your brand in front of more eyes, which often turns into commission work and more social media followers. There's also so much to learn from other vendors' setups and even their teardowns. So do your best to keep an eye out for things that might translate well to your booth. With all that being said, even if you can't predict how many people are gonna show up to a pop-up, you can better your odds of success by creating an intentional and enticing shopping experience. Now let's talk about the cost involved in attending a pop-up as a vendor. First off, there will always be initial display cost, which can be as cheap or as expensive as you want. Going the cheap route doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to look cheap. For example, you can find some really great pre-loved items at places like thrift stores, estate sales, or Facebook Marketplace. In my opinion, using traditional plastic stands can look cheesy and might cause your business to be taken less seriously. So I definitely recommend getting items that are in line with your brand's aesthetic, but be mindful of where you source them so you can get the best deal. The worst thing that you could do is wait until the very last minute and end up buying something that you don't even like just because you didn't allot yourself enough time to find what you wanted. Another important thing to keep in mind when choosing displays is how portable they are. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where you can't easily carry all of your product displays by yourself in about two trips or less. Now the actual cost to attend a pop-up as a vendor will vary depending on the event that you're attending. Every once in a while there will be free events and I always recommend going to these because it's a free way for you to get your brand in front of more people's eyes. Even if the turnout ends up being small, at least the only thing you invested was your time and not your business's money. Events that I've attended often cost $50 for one day. I'd consider an expensive pop-up if the daily rate was $100 or more, but sometimes the more expensive pop-ups are worth it. For example, popping up at events like Pride or the Rose Bowl Flea Market are really expensive, but there's so much foot traffic that a lot of vendors sell out, so I'd say that the higher fee is generally worth it. Keep in mind though that these events were also a lot of work, so at the end of the day you're definitely going to be exhausted, but the time and effort that goes into big events generally has a really good payout in terms of sales. Just as a frame of reference, at a normal pop-up with a $50 vendor fee, I'd consider it a decent day if I made about $500. More than that is a great day and less than that is a slow day. There have been pop-up days where I've only made like $50, while my best pop-up was $1,400. I've had friends make as much as $3,500 from a single pop-up, but obviously that'll vary greatly between different businesses and different locations. Hopefully my transparency surrounding cost and sales will help you make an informed decision for your business. Now let's talk about weather. Weather is another big thing to consider when deciding what pop-ups to attend. If the weather sucks, not only do you not want to be there, but your customers aren't going to want to be there either. I've attended pop-ups where it was snowing or raining, and not only was it absolutely miserable, but I also didn't get any foot traffic. After attending a few pop-ups with awful weather, I decided I would only attend pop-ups moving forward with relatively nice weather. The only exceptions I make to this are big holiday events like a Christmas pop-up or an event that's inside. There's a pretty direct correlation to good weather and good sales. Okay, let's talk about the fun stuff next, and that is the setup. The actual setup itself is super important and can make or break your event. For example, if you only have a flat table with products laying on top of it, no one is gonna feel enticed to walk into your booth. Try elevating your products on different height stands so that there's more visual interest when customers are walking by. Using vertical space is also super important. Rather than having a ton of stuff at hip height that takes up the entire ground space, use the vertical height lining the walls of your space for a more open room concept. It's good for foot traffic and it's good for catching customers' eyes. Many pop-ups give you a 10 by 10 space and you're expected to bring a tent and tent weights for if it gets windy. Bring the weights. I've seen customers almost get seriously injured from tents because someone didn't bring weights for their tent and the wind completely blew the tent over. Lord knows that just one lawsuit would make a small business go under, so don't let that business be yours. Now back to the space. If you have clothes in your space, try putting your clothes at the very front of the tent. You can hang them on the front of the tent or you can even put them on a mannequin. Displaying it like this will help your products be seen from farther away. So while customers are walking to your tent, they're building 
excitement and anticipation for your booth. Ultimately, you need to position everything in a way that's both inviting and eye-catching. Even something as simple as having a rug on the ground will help invite customers into your space. You should treat your space like a tiny retail store, and once you start looking at it like that, it should help a lot. I also recommend checking out a company called Vertical Ledge on YouTube and Instagram. They sell the most beautiful displays. I've never purchased from them before, but that's only because their products are outside of my price range. But their social media is filled with a ton of great tips that will help you create a more professional looking pop-up. And the more professional your pop-ups look, the more likely likely you are to sell your products. Now let's talk about attracting customers into your space. One key item that attracts a ton of customers into my space is a full body mirror with a big bold decal on it. I first saw this done by Monica's Collective and I really loved the idea, so I implemented it into my space with my own personal twist and it's been amazing for attracting customers. My decal says SLAY in all capital letters and is strategically placed at eye height. It's the first thing people see when they're walking past my booth and everyone is drawn to it. Whether they think it's stupid or cool doesn't really matter because it gets them to stop in front of my booth and that's my objective. I position the mirror at the very front of my booth and a lot of customers stop to take pictures in front of it. It's a great conversation starter and brings a ton of people into my booth that wouldn't have otherwise stopped. I purchased the decal from an Etsy seller called Crafty Farm Wives if you want to check them out. I also experimented with bringing a rack of vintage clothes that I curated from local estate sales. You'd be surprised at how many people came into the space for the vintage, but ended up leaving with handmade goods. Of course, this isn't going to work for every business, but use it as an example of something that entices customers into the space. Now let's talk about signage. Signage is a very important factor that you should be considering for your pop-up. You want to make it easy for customers to know who you are and what you do, even if you weren't there to sell yourself. Trust me when I say that there will be times when you need to leave your booth, either to go to the restroom or get food, and there won't be some Someone there to relieve you. Most of the time, people who are popping up next to you can help watch your booth while you're away, but you can't really rely on them to know anything about your business, so you'll want to make signs to ensure that you don't lose out on any customers while you're away from your booth. Creating QR codes on Canva that link to your social profiles like your website or your Instagram is a great place to start. This way, your customers can find your socials with very little effort on their part. Scanning a QR code also increases the likelihood that the customer will follow you on social media. It's much better than giving them a business card and hoping that they look up your company later. You can also make signs that say exactly what you're selling, but make sure that they look nice and that they're easy to store. For example, you could make a sign on Canva and then print it out and laminate it. This way, it looks professional, it won't tear when it's stored, and it won't weather as easily as an unprotected piece of paper would. Here are some signs that I made for my clothing racks that distinguish the handmade rack from the vintage rack. I used my embroidery machine and made the signs out of leftover fabric that I had lying around. They came out exactly how I had envisioned and are very in line with the aesthetic that I aim for with my brand. Now, we already mentioned business cards and as much as I wish that they weren't necessary, I think that they actually are. You'd be surprised how many people ask for business cards and it actually happens so often that I recommend you buy your business cards in bulk. Personally, I designed my business cards through Canva because I found that they have a pretty good price point and the shipping is really fast. However, there are lots of different options for companies who make business cards, so shop around and find one that works for you. Okay, now the last thing to consider in regards to signage is your packaging. You want to make sure that you're using every possible opportunity for your brand to be remembered. And branded packaging will help customers remember your brand far after they've left the pop-up. As a small business owner, custom packaging can get really expensive really fast. So what I recommend doing is buying a stamp and using it on any paper good that you want. Stamps are reusable and the only maintenance they require is purchasing ink when your ink runs out. So it's really the perfect low-cost solution for branded packaging. I use brown paper bags that I stamp my logo and my Instagram handle on and every time a customer purchases from me I put their product inside the brown paper bag along with one of my business cards. This way my brand is in front of their eyes multiple times after they've gone home. I purchased my branded stamp from an Etsy seller called Prim and Fur if you're interested in checking them out. Okay now let's talk about the logistics of your pop-up. Logistics would include things like food, caffeine, and bathroom breaks. If you're doing an event on your own, it's important to be properly fed before you go. Caffeine can also be super important because the days are long, but caffeine is also a double-edged sword. The more caffeine you drink, the more you have to pee, and every time you use the restroom, you're away from your booth. Not to mention that bathroom lines at pop-ups can be really long, and the longer you're away from your booth, the less likely you are to make sales. The same thing goes for food. 
if you don't properly pack food for the day, you're likely gonna have to leave and purchase food from a food truck. And again, those lines are gonna be super long and you're gonna be away from your booth for longer. It's a great idea to have a friend relieve you for a bathroom or a food break if they can, but otherwise make sure that you create a sign that says that you're away from your booth, but you'll be back shortly. You can even put a QR code for your Instagram or your website on it. So even if the customer leaves the booth, they will still have interacted with your brand. One little bonus tip for you is that you will make more sales if you're standing versus if you're sitting. I don't know the reasoning behind this, but I've personally done experiments and standing is directly correlated to sales. I do bring a chair to have small sitting breaks when it's slow, but for the most part, I try to stand and engage with every single one of the customers that passes by. Engaging with a customer can be as simple as smiling or making eye contact with them, or you can even spark up a conversation. My favorite way to do this is to compliment them in some way. It's a great way to help bring customers into your booth. Now let's talk about the logistics of setting up and tearing down. It can be a huge pain in the butt, especially if you're solo, which you likely will be. You're gonna wanna find the best way to consolidate your items so that it's easy to make trips to and from the car. I recommend only making two trips or less, which is exactly why I recommended earlier that you choose displays that are easy to transport. My system includes two rolling racks full of clothes, a folding table and chairs, a carpet, a pop-up tent, a box filled with products and signage, and anything else that I need for the day inside of a backpack. Most of these items can be easily placed on the bottom of the rolling rack. So I'll roll one rack over while I carry my backpack and I'll set everything down. Then I'll go back to my car for the second rack. It's a pretty good system that I've revised many times over again, because like I said before, there's always room for improvement and you should always be thinking about how to improve your brand. The next really important thing that I wanna mention is that you need to know your customer. Sometimes people will say really unkind things and the best way to deal with it is to remind yourself that they're not your target customer. For example, if someone comes at you and says that your price is outrageous, it's probably one of two things. It's out of their budget or your values just simply don't align with theirs. You can't please everyone, so I wouldn't recommend trying. Do your best, pay yourself a living wage, and truthfully, you can just laugh off the rest. They're not out here making their dreams come true, you are. But with all that being said, I do have a secret to charging what you're worth while avoiding unwanted opinions from customers and simultaneously increasing your sales. I didn't think it was possible until I implemented this one thing into my business, but it instantly worked. If you wanna know what that one thing is, just click or tap the screen and I'll see you in the next one.